Hi, everybody. I'm Nathan. For the last five years, I have run the Student Film Awards. It used to be called the Maine Student Film Festival. It's a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to celebrating achievement uh, in student film, video, television, cinema, anything that is media, that is visual, that students have their hand in. Basically, we want to be able to promote and celebrate. Um, three main ways that that happens. We have a year festival. All right. Um, uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Looks Perfect. Good. Um, uh, uh, we have a yearly festival where we solicit submissions. This year it was uh, just over 5,600 submissions from 128, 130 countries. Um, and we called that down into the most competitive in each category. And then we screen the nominated films uh, at an in-person event in Miami, Florida, and then a virtual event the week after. It's all free to submit to, free to attend. We don't charge the filmmakers anything. We are entirely self-funded through uh, corporate sponsorships and through institutional support. Um, so that's what we're best known for. And as we've kind of scaled that and, and received more submissions over the years, we shifted away from Maine and now have, have, have a very happy home in Miami, where I think we're going to stay for the foreseeable future. But two other initiatives that we're not as well known for, but are near and dear to my heart and are a big deal for me um, and for us as an organization are our year-round programming events, where we're able to subsidize the travel costs or the venue costs of film professionals and film professors who come in to speak to underprivileged communities. So they run workshops, panels, roundtables. They, you know, are, are able to speak to people one-on-one -on -one about what it means to be a student filmmaker, what, um, what being able to make a career out of storytelling and 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 out of being able to be creative means. So that's something that we're very, very proud of because it is just increasing access, not only around Miami, but but also we've done a lot of stuff in the Northeast and I want to start to do stuff in other countries here in the next uh, few years. And then the third is through both of these initiatives, we now have a roster of just over 10,000 student filmmakers. And because such a big part of our show of our festival that we do every year is um, curating the most competitive submissions, we have a well-defined roster of, you know, probably the most talented, passionate student filmmakers anywhere on planet Earth. And we um, are able to do a lot of matchmaking with that. So at the high school and college level, we introduce them to other academic institutions that are willing uh, to offer them scholarships or or are interested in having them as students. At the college and graduate level, we are able to introduce them into internship opportunities. And then more at the graduate level, we're able to make first employment connections. So uh, that is what we are up to. Uh, we just closed submissions. So my ask uh, today, if any of this sounded appealing, on August 14th, we'll be announcing who's in this year's show. We've been very, very busy. We have a team of 25 volunteers who have watched all 5,600 films and have curated the best 125 of them to be nominated in 15 categories. So all of that will be announced who made the cut on August 14th at 12 p.m. Eastern. That's at studentfilmawards.org or on YouTube. Thank you. Wow, so tell me again, how many videos and how many people reviewed those? It was like yeah, 5,000 so videos? 5,600 films submitted from you know 120 something countries. Um, I, I, they are short films, you know, the best student films that we've seen are ones that don't try to spread themselves too thin by making a feature right off the bat. We still do screen some of them because obviously, I mean, if you can hit that caliber of talent and quality we're looking for, then absolutely we'll have you. It's about the merit. But uh, most of the films that we see are probably within the 8, 10, 15 minute range. So it doesn't sound or it's, it's that's not a lot of that's still a yeah. lot of videos I, I give you guys kudos for that because I mean when when I'm working like with our national competition we just did um our top I think it, the most advanced um round we ended up with 52 or 54 videos and I thought oh my gosh I'll never get these done so I can't even imagine um going through that many videos but that's that's very cool I mean you you must have such a broad um 
broad subject matter within that. And uh, it, I guess that brings me to another question for you is, is there a subject matter or it's really up to that individual um, creator as to what they want to share and talk about? The only thing that we're looking for is merit. And that's very vaguely defined on its own, right? But like um, uh, we're paying attention to all of the pieces that make up whatever story they're trying to tell. It, you know, we have a standard in place for being screened in our show in terms of the cinematography of the piece, sound design, acting, animation. And we, um, and as long as, you know, we're able to confidently put our name behind it, it doesn't really matter what the film's about. It doesn't matter how long it is. We specifically have actually built out internal tooling that no other festival has that allows us to judge these films in a completely blind environment where, um, where um, it's the information available to the, the judges and to our panel is only the film and that's it. And then they have like a rating scale and a rating form, but there's no information about who the filmmaker is, what school they went to. So that can't be a bias. Like we don't know if the filmmaker's Matt Damon's son, like there's no way to influence how a film gets selected. It is all about the merit of the filmmaker and the quality of the film submitted. Well, I do have more questions on my list of questions from YouTube now. Our Arturo Mendez, who is a colleague of ours and a host later in the show, wonders, are the winners or nominees works eventually available for anybody to watch online? Yes, sir. So um, you are able to the weekend after. So we have two events. We have one in person in Miami, January 19th through 21st. And then we have one the weekend after January 26th through 28th, where that is entirely free online. That'll be on YouTube like it has been in years past. Um, and that has our entire programming slate. So even if you can't come to Miami, you're still getting the exact same experience. Okay. And then his second question is, what trends on the use of technology in short films have you observed on participants? I have seen a significant shift towards animation. We are now trending towards uh, 26 or 27 percent of our submitted pool this year has been animated films. That has not been the case in years past. It is now our most competitive category by a long mm -hmm. shot. You know, there are dozens and dozens of films competing for every one spot. Um, so the ability to make animated films at a significantly lower cost than it has been in years past, both in terms of intellectual cost and then also the cost for software and tools and models and technology, um, that is what we have seen. Now, I think the broader question is probably like, is any of the technology we're seeing now eventually going to make its way? You know, AI, um, I am very excited to see what happens with the Apple Vision Pro, because I think making films for headsets and for augmented and virtual reality is going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of revolutionary filmmaking and storytelling techniques, I think, are going to come from that. But it's too early to tell, unfortunately, because those technologies just hit the market. So, in, you know, we closed our submission pool three weeks ago, so not enough time to know for sure. But definitely next year, I think we're going to start to see some of those effects. Nice. So, Marcelo, I'm sorry for hogging all the questions. You're welcome to jump in and, and, and uh, ask a couple questions if you'd like. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you for this great project. Just a curiosity, uh, do you have any categories of the movies, the films? And another question, curiosity, do you have any uh, applicant from Brazil? Yes. And the last uh, one, yeah. and the all last right. one, I'd like that you tell me some case that you, I, I think you have many of them successful case that some follow-up after the festival that someone, some student has become a famous. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, uh, the first question, I apologize. Um, uh, would you mind restating that very first question just so I remember? 
what I said, what I asked if the festival has some categories, like okay. an Oscar, yeah. for example. So we have 15 categories, which we are able to nominate and shortlist films for it. So we have everything from achievement in animation, achievement in voice acting, achievement in documentary filmmaking. I can go on and on. But the goal is to be able to celebrate three categories of people. One are the directors themselves, because for a lot of student films, the directors are wearing many hats. Two are people who are not the directors, but are still responsible for significant contributions and achievements. So this could be things like people who are um, composing original scores for a student film or people who are, you know, handling props or people who are building the world in which this film takes place. And then the third are the actor, the actors and actresses on screen. So we have 15 categories, but the goal is to highlight achievements for one of those three categories of people. Um, does that make sense? Perfect. Perfect. Completely. So, um, uh, the second question was about uh, the filmmakers from Brazil. Yes, I actually just reviewed one three hours ago because we're still in deliberations ahead of, you know, our our August 14th nominations announcement. So we have a pretty significant makeup of filmmakers from South and Latin America. This is actually increased this year because we've moved our show down to Miami, which I mean, obviously has a more Hispanic and Latino population. So we are seeing an increase in, I, 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 I think across the board, pretty much a double the submissions in every South and Central American country. So uh, uh, the future is bright for us being able to tell those stories. I'm super excited. Um, and then the third question was about the case studies. So we're just starting to see those effects. Our first show was in 2018. And as they leave their student status and start to enter the professional market, you know, we have started to see filmmakers who have screened at our past shows go on to win um, the Student Academy Award. Um, uh, we've had a few people placed at Pixar and uh, uh, the Walt Disney Company. We've had one turn down Pixar. Uh, we've had somebody get their film that they screened uh, at our show the very first year has now been optioned for a feature film. So um, obviously we cannot take credit for all of that because that is solely on the talent of the filmmaker. But yes, we have seen filmmakers that we've screened at our show, you know, start to really be able to show their talents in, in, this lovely industry. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. Thank Keep you. Going. Thank you. I appreciate that. I did have one more question for you, Nathan, of since course. we still have you for five minutes. Yes, I'm going to take all your time up. Um, what is a typical, um, what, what if any criteria is there for the creator? Mm -hmm. um, do they have to be a certain age? Do they have to be from, are there places they can't be from? Um, what else would I ask you about there? Um, and then what is kind of your typical average creator? What, what is their, the model right now? Yeah. So we have, uh, two main groups of filmmakers that we see on our roster. We have people who have pursued film professionally and are currently enrolled in a film school or have made it clear that that's their intention. Or we have people who are just dying to tell a specific story. And they're not filmmakers, but in their quest to tell the specific story and to make it reach the most amount of people, they've chosen film to be that medium and they just happen to be very good at it. In terms of geographic or age restrictions, our festival runs a little differently than other festivals. Usually festivals have submitters pay a fee um, in order to submit. I think that's super predatory. So uh, um, uh, we don't do that at all. It's free to submit. And because it's free to submit, we don't need to deal with the sanctions from filmmakers like in Iran or Russia right now. So this allows us to cast the widest net to find the best quality films and the best filmmakers you know, on the market. Um, in terms of age, we currently solicit films from high school students, college students, and graduate students. We can also solicit films from independent filmmakers that are a student status. So this could be, you know, homeschool, so on and so forth. 
Um, we, after we verified that they do have an academic affiliation, we do not judge separately in those categories. So it's not like we have a high school category uh, and all the high school films are judged together. They're thrown into one big pot. Okay. So for those younger than high school, it's a good time to be practicing their filmmaking so that when they're in high school, they're ready to submit. That, and then also, I mean, uh, to take advantage of uh, the year-round programming that we're starting to do more and more and, and, and start to, you know, leave the Northeast and uh, the Florida area with, I mean, um, I, I was starting to look at doing some things virtually, just year-round virtually, but a lot of that has been, you know, half-day workshops, hey, here's how to do specific thing, like here's an introduction on on how to design for sound and film, or here's an introduction on how to color grade. So a lot of those year-round workshops um, are there for filmmakers at any level. I mean, um, not even students technically. So um, um, that would be the best way for younger filmmakers to get involved with this. Okay. That sounds great. Hey, before you leave, I know you're going to shut off your camera in a second because we're going to move um, to another person. But before you go, can you put some of your links in chat so that when I'm putting the um, breaking down these videos after the event that I can include that in the um, uh, description for you? Any any link that you want somebody to have, stick it in chat for me, please. I certainly can. And I Nathan, saying, thank you. Again, I'm August sorry. 15th. 12 p.m. is when we announce this year's show. So if anything I've said has interest to you, then please hop on our website, studentfilmawards.org, and see who's in this year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nathan. Cheers.